Welcome to the second part of our review of the history of speculative zoology. In the first video, we looked at what could be considered the origin of Spexu, H.G. Wells's The Time Machine, as well as a few works from the early part of the 20th century, before exploring the iconic After Man and the weird, creepy-looking dinosauroid idea. We're continuing right where we left off last time, as we look at some of the more recent speculative zoology projects. The dinosauroid would not be the end for projects detailing the alternate evolution of dinosaurs. In 1988, Dougal Dixon published another speculative zoology book, The New Dinosaurs. This time, it was about a hypothetical Earth where non-avian dinosaurs had not gone extinct at the end of the Cretaceous period, and it looked at what our current time might be like had this occurred. Focusing on introducing the concept of zoo geography to an audience that may be unfamiliar with this, The New Dinosaurs again utilises imaginary examples in order to illustrate real biological processes, furthering the idea that speculative zoology can be highly educational, as well as entertainment. In the world shown in the book, the same events that took place in the Cenozoic of our timeline happened to the dinosaurian inhabitants, such as the Ice Age and the biotic interchange between the Americas, and the effects these occurrences have on the animals is explored. However, the book has been criticised for seeming to feature some animals that appear suspiciously like dinosaurified modern mammals. For example, there's a kangaroo-like dinosaur that inhabits Australia, as well as a completely different species that has obviously converged with a koala. Paleontologists have pointed out that this project ignores parts of what was actually known about dinosaur paleobiology and their evolution, instead forcing the convergence of dinosaurs with the mammals that inhabit this timeline. Although, Dixon has said that in making the book, he was primarily interested in finding patterns and then pushing those patterns to the extreme. And, in the end, it is a cognitive exercise meant to explain a specific feature of biology not that focused on dinosaur biology, but just using them as an example. And, to be fair, there are actually a number of predictions in the book that turned out to be discovered in real dinosaurs and other archosaurs in later years. Examples of these include fluffy, feathered dinosaurs, small theropods that climb trees, and giant pterosaurs that lead a largely terrestrial lifestyle. Now we come to Dougal Dixon's next project, which is a bit of an interesting one. Man After Man, an anthropology of the future. The final project that we see today is apparently very different to Dixon's original idea for this book, which would have involved humans time-travelling 50 million years into the future to the world of After Man, and setting up a new civilization here since our current time was going pretty badly. The book would have then documented these future human impacts on the animals of After Man, and shown how the creatures became extinct due to man-made catastrophes. Essentially, it would have been the destruction of all the organisms from his previous book. A pretty cool idea, really, and a good way to illustrate the effects our species has on other animals. However, the name Man After Man was taken and used for a different idea, one that Dixon himself has declared a disaster of a project. I have not read it myself, though I've read summaries and seen sections from it, and admittedly it does look very weird and creepy. Still fascinating though, but I think I would have liked to see the original idea. Man After Man chronicles the events of the future throughout several different time periods, beginning with the ending of our modern civilization, and explores what might happen in the evolution of genetically engineered human species that survived after our original species died out. There are some very unsettling creatures featured in the book, such as the hosts, the aquamorphs, and the slothmen, and it eventually ends when a mass extinction occurs due to the descendants of humans that went off into space returning and pillaging the Earth for resources. This post-human species leaves the planet in complete ruins, having wiped out almost all life except for one other species of human descendant. Man After Man is still a wonderfully imaginative work of art, but doesn't really seem to have as much of a focus on real science and biology as After Man and the New Dinosaurs. For example, there are some odd post-human species that have the ability to recall the memories of their ancestors. I suppose there's still a lot about genetic engineering and climate change, and there's of course still evolution going on, but clearly Dixon was not too pleased about the outcome. A version of his original concept was actually modified into a book called Green World, which has so far only been published in Japan, and involves humans colonising an alien planet and wreaking havoc on the ecosystem there. As it turns out, in Japan, Dougal Dixon is actually very popular, 
and there was even a Japanese stop-motion TV series made of Afterman from sometime in the 90s I think, as well as an animated film. Clips of the TV series can be found on YouTube, and it's pretty cool seeing all these fantastic hypothetical animals I've read about actually moving about on screen. I'll link the clips in the description, it's worth a watch even if you don't speak Japanese. So, once Dixon's books had been published, they essentially started a modern speculative zoology movement, with numerous projects featuring imaginary alternate and future organisms appearing in various media ever since. Some of these may have been directly inspired by the work of Dixon, and others were probably coincidental, however the overall influence of these books is undeniably significant. In 2001, another project that seems to have been inspired by Dixon, seeing as it directly compares its vision of the future to that seen in After Man, was published. The book Future Evolution, written by paleontologist Peter Ward. In this version of a speculative future, humans have not actually gone extinct, and in the first time period, 1000 years in the future, the human population has stabilised at about 11 billion. 11 billion people is still a huge number to feed and maintain though, and many endangered organisms have gone extinct by this time, and most of the remaining land is being used for agriculture. At this time, ocean ecosystems are still relatively intact and have not undergone many major extinctions, although it has become overfished. After 10 million years and numerous more extinctions, humans are still around and there are huge dumps of rubbish where multiple species of rats survive, feeding on the human waste. At this point, a time traveller arrives by one of these dumps, and they observe creatures such as snakes with frog-like tongues that feed on the rats, and pigs that are adapted to scavenging through the dumps. The traveller is then attacked by a group of crow descendants, which are now violent, flesh-eating animals. By the end of the book, we're looking at the last days of a habitable earth, when plants are all small and waxy, and all the remaining animals that were not wiped out by humans are highly armoured and low to the ground. Humans are alive at this time too, and they're constantly working and apparently trying to still have some sort of meaningful life. Another entertaining piece of work, Future Earth also has some educational value to it, since it explores the ideas of humanity's impact on the natural world, extinctions, and discusses the possibility of human speciation. The next most notable speculative zoology project that appeared was the 2003 documentary-style series The Future is Wild. This series consisted of 13 episodes, and explored three different time periods in a future after humans have left the Earth. The show looked at 5 million years in the future, 100 million years in the future, and finally 200 million years in the future. Some of the most remarkable hypothetical creatures from this project include organisms such as the gannet whale, a giant bird that evolved from gannets to converge on cetacean-like features, various terrestrial cephalopods, and the flish, powered flight-capable fish. The Future is Wild also looked at various different environments within each time period, and interviewed many scientists who concluded what the world might be like at these times, and how organisms could have evolved. Some of the ideas that people came up with have been considered as controversial and not very likely to happen, but by using research and getting actual scientists involved, it ensured that this show is based in real science and therefore has an educational aim. Dougal Dixon himself was actually featured in the program, alongside paleontologists such as Philip Curry and Richard Forty. Dixon also co-authored a book to accompany the series, and although he was originally hired as a consultant, he actually became a designer too, and therefore all the animals you see in The Future is Wild were designed by Dixon based off of other consultants' ideas. Due to the rights to Afterman being owned by DreamWorks at the time, however, this meant new organisms had to be invented, and there was never any possibility that the Afterman creatures could be used. At one point, there was apparently going to be some sort of documentary film version of the TV show produced, but that doesn't seem to have happened yet, though there's a possibility it still might. In addition, there appears to be a virtual reality game in development that's based on the world of The Future is Wild, which would be very cool to see if it is completed. Next, we come to a slightly different entry that's a little more mainstream, the 2005 remake of King Kong. The reason I'm including this version and not the original 1933 film, or the MonsterVerse Kong, although the MonsterVerse as a whole could potentially count as a sort of speculative zoology, is because of the accompanying book. 
The World of Kong, A Natural History of Skull Island. This book is filled with concept art from the film that's presented as if expeditions to the island had occurred after the events of the movie, and they had gathered all this information about the biodiversity of the place. There are, of course, some questionable evolutionary histories, but it is an example of speculative animals being created and details of their biology being explained, so nevertheless should count as speculative zoology. There are actually a lot of creatures included in the book, many of which never even appeared in the film, and they're accompanied by some fantastic illustrations. Each animal is given a made-up binomial name, and there's a description of their biology and behaviours, as well as an overview of the geological history of Skull Island itself and all the different environments and habitats that cover it. This work is definitely more of a purely entertainment-focused project, but it's still a great way to introduce people who might not be that familiar with natural history to the principles of this science using a hypothetical example. Moving on, 2007 saw the start of a series called Dino Sapien. This show featured an intelligent non-bird dinosaur called Eno, as well as a pair of what seemed to be intelligent bipedal ankylosaurs, called the Diggers. The idea of the show was that these animals had survived the end Cretaceous mass extinction somewhere and evolved a human level or almost human level intelligence, before hiding away in an underground world. At the beginning of the series, Eno emerges from underground in Alberta, Canada, being pursued by the Diggers. This show had 15 episodes, and I actually remember watching it as a child and absolutely loving it. In the story, Eno befriends some of the human characters, and is apparently capable of basic speech, as he's able to communicate with them. Eno is supposed to be a descendant of a dromaeosaur species, and it's possible that his design, and perhaps the whole concept, drew some inspiration from the dinosauroid we talked about. Dino Sapien was a lot of fun, however it only lasted for a single season and finished in 2007, but it would not be the only show featuring speculative zoology to air that year. We now move on to another TV series that I watched when I was younger, and one that was a pretty big part of my childhood, Primeval. This program, airing on ITV in the UK and from the creators of the Walking with Dinosaurs series, was about a team of people dealing with anomalies, which are tears in space and time, appearing across the country, and the creatures that subsequently came through them. I actually found this show pretty terrifying the first time I watched it, but it was so good and I loved it nonetheless. Anyway, although the anomalies often opened into the past and allowed various prehistoric animals through to the present, they also opened into the future, and some pretty cool speculative animals were therefore featured. The most memorable of these have to be the future predators, vicious, flightless descendants of bats that use echolocation to hunt and are incredibly fast. The predators come from a future where humanity is gone, and may apparently have been at least partially responsible for their disappearance. These are not the only speculative animals though, since there were also Megopterans, giant predatory insects that lived at the same time as the future predators, and the disturbing camouflage beast, an animal design partly based on the eye, eye. After seeing that episode, I didn't go anywhere near fireplaces for quite a while. There are many more speculative organisms featured in this show, both from the future and based on prehistoric organisms, and if you haven't watched it before, I would highly recommend it. Now, there does seem to be a slight trend through some speculative zoology projects to include the very cool concept of giant, flightless bats. I've already mentioned the Night Stalker from After Man, but Primeval's future predators follow a pretty similar sort of idea. Allegedly, one of the creators of Primeval does have a copy of After Man, and so it's possible that some inspiration was drawn from the book, making Primeval yet another spec zoo project to have been influenced by Dixon's works. It should also briefly be mentioned that a spin-off series to Primeval, Primeval New World, was produced, and followed a group of people encountering anomalies opening in Canada. One of the characters from the original series, Connor, made an appearance in this show, but New World didn't really have as much of a focus on speculative zoology as Primeval did, mainly featuring real, known animals, and it was sadly cancelled after one season. Now, I know I said in the last video that I would be covering the rest of the history of speculative zoology in a part 2, but people like trilogies, right? Once again, I've underestimated how much there was to talk about, and overestimated the time in which I would have to make this video. And since the first part seemed to get such a great reception, I figured you probably wouldn't mind if I made this a three-part series. Next time, we will actually be talking about the rest of the history of speculative zoology, including All Tomorrows, All Yesterdays, and some of the various internet spec zoo projects that have come about in recent years. 
I hope you don't mind this continuation of the series, and I really hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you would like to find out more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you would like to see more from us.